Great. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I am very excited for um, our speaker tonight. But before we get to her, I do want to ask that everybody please keep their um, microphones muted. We will actually have some, I have some volunteers here and our interns actually monitoring, making sure we don't interrupt the presentation. Um, but there will be time at the end for people to ask questions. You can also use the chat function to put in questions you have and we'll, we'll get to them afterwards. I'm so excited. We have had a lot of people signed up for this uh, webinar tonight. So I think that there are probably a few new faces to Wild Virginia. So welcome. Wild Virginia is a grassroots uh, member-based nonprofit no organization dedicated to protecting and connecting Virginia's wild places. Uh, we do this through a few campaigns, including our water quality and Mountain Valley Pipeline and Habitat Connectivity campaigns. But another area we very much focus in is outings and education, making sure that everybody has the ability and knowledge and they're aware of what they can do to help protect and connect Virginia's wild places. Um, we host webinars, but we also uh, host monthly book clubs, our annual Earth Day Mike Night, which I'll talk about in a second. And occasionally we even host in-person hikes. We used to do that a lot more before COVID. We do it every now and then now uh, when we feel it's safe enough to do so. But uh, I do want to announce that our next book club is actually next Monday night, April 20, or March 27th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And it we will be we will be discussing Diary of a Young Naturalist by Dara McAnulty. So um, if you go to our Eventbrite page or our website, you can find a link to register for that. And we also wanted to call attention to our annual open mic night. Open mic night. Um, that will be held on April 20th at 7 p.m. also on Zoom. And this is kind of an open mic night for you to be able to share words. People have shared passages from books, poems they've written, that kind of stuff to celebrate Earth Day. Um, you don't have to share to be a part of it. You can also just join in and listen. So um, please join us for that. I will send follow-up links to all those things afterwards. But tonight, I am very happy to introduce our speaker, Anna Sparks. Anna is a volunteer educator with the Virginia Herpetological Society, as well as a virtual education master herpetologist, junior master herpetologist instructor, instructor for the Amphibian Foundation. She is also a member of the Michigan Society of Herpetologists the Society for the Study of Amphibians and Reptiles, and the American Society of Ichthyologists and Herpetologists. She is so cool. Um, I've had the pleasure to speak to Anna and get to know her a little bit and talk about her menagerie of friends she has, some of which she will, I believe, be sharing with us today. And I'm very excited to hear her speak. So please, Anna, if you are ready. I mute. Hello, everybody. No, I'm not so cool. You know, if it looks better on paper than uh, in person. Um, but thank you very much for having me. I'm very honored because I get to speak about like some of the close animals <laughs> and uh, that I adore. And I, um, I think everybody should, um, you know, um, I'm sure everybody who's here is interested in them, at least if not uh, loves them. So um yes um so um we'll talk about salamanders in general because i wasn't sure what kind of um, audience we'll have and i i figured out probably it's a diverse audience so why not um, um so here we go i'm going to share my screen now um okay Nine. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It's just I'm just trying to so to do it on full screen because um, it likes playing with me. I haven't done this for a while, so I apologize. Um, um, it seems like if I 
I'm that kind of person who has to learn constantly, and I love it. But um, uh, so um, we'll talk about uh, amphibians because salamanders are amphibians. Um, Virginia is absolutely, um, I was use amazing, um, awesome, um, because we have such a diversity of amphibians. Um, uh, you know, over like 30, we have 39 spe uh, 59 species of salamanders. No, not. And I'm saying that because we started doing genetic, um, a lot of genetic research and a lot of, um, they're coming up with, uh, in, with pretty much um, a diversity into species that some of them turn in their own species. Um, so let's go. Uh, and I'm gonna try it again to do my screen. I'm so sorry. And come on, come on. It had to happen. Um, let's go back. I'm sorry. So if anybody has questions. Um, okay, so I think that's the only way. Uh, See it? It's okay. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. No, I don't want to. I think it just froze on me, honestly. Just a second. Yep. Um, okay, we'll do it a different way. It's so much. Uh, um, okay. Mm. Okay. Anybody knows? Okay, what's a salamander? <laughs> oh, okay. So, what's a salamander? I'm still, still trying to figure out how. If anybody knows how to get rid of a top, please let me know. Um, I don't know why um, it's playing with me, but what's a salamander? So, uh, okay, let's see. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, this is very. Okay, is it not progressing it forward? <laughs> it's working. Yeah, it was working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Finally, <laughs> hopefully, it will work. So, um, amphibians. Um, we know that amphibians are vertebrates and tetrapods. So they do have four uh, legs. Um, what else makes an amphibian an amphibian? Um, because a lot of them look like lizards. I had a lot of kids who think they're lizards. So uh, it's just a common misunderstanding. Uh, yeah. Um, so what makes them, they have two life stages. So they're aquatic larval stage and terrestrial adult stage. Um, some of them will have in a between stage too, like the aft. Um, it's, a, it's a rogue, the different. Oh, by the way, I have to apologize. If you don't understand me, I have an accent. I don't mind being asked what I said. <laughs> um, even if I've been here for a very long time, you know, still English is my um, second language in a way. So, okay, so they have a semi permeable gland uh, glandular skin. So, what's cool about them, uh, one of uh, is they can, their skin is working as a absorption mechanism very much. It's not just water, but, and they breathe through it. So um, they have, um, but mainly two glands that some of them are um, produce useful protein that aid with the exchange of water, oxygen, carbon dioxide uh, in or out of, <laughs> of granular glands. So let's go ahead and see it. Uh, so they can produce toxic, disgusting, um, it goes backwards. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. So oh, I see that I'm so sorry. Uh, I use this new. Okay, I'm so sorry. Maybe you should do questions and and uh, and, uh, <laughs> and animals first. <laughs> hmm. Is it not 
progressing forward is that what the problem is yeah it's like uh, it's completely now let's see um it froze on me yes like it doesn't do anything oh <gasps> please do thanks for the prayers <laughs> and the good <laughs> karma <laughs> oh my gosh thank you please work <laughs> oh, okay i feel your skin <laughs> yes <laughs> it's working okay i hope you can see it i can see it <laughs> Uh, so amphibian skin, uh, semi-permeable and glandular. So they breathe through it. They exchange um, water and air. Um, and um, okay, it does it to me again. <laughs> um, I just, I, so these are different pictures of uh, under microscope of amphibian skin. Um, uh, this is a toad, I think, but they're pretty much uh, very similar and this we recognize probably the aft of uh, the southern newt. Um, another thing that amphibian makes uh, an amphibian, amphibian are the eggs, and these are actually salamander eggs. I think, I believe they're Jefferson uh, salamanders. It's a picture I took uh, a vernal pool very close to my um, home um, in Virginia. So. Uh, we'll start a little bit of like uh, where amphibians came from and how long they've been here. And they've been here a very long time, over 400 million years. So they pretty much beat the dinosaurs to it. Um, and um, these are just some of few examples um, of um, prehistoric amphibians. So you, you can see, um, and it's very easy to. They still look, some of uh, they look, um, we still have living creatures on Earth that kind of look like the pandero tears, like lung, the lungfish. Um, all the species of lungfish pretty much look the same. Um, so that's, um, and what's interesting is uh, if you ever Google a lungfish larva, um, 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 it will look exactly like an um, it's very hard to distinguish between them in a salamander larva. So it's, it's pretty amazing. First time I saw it, I was like, oh. Um, this is another example of prehistoric amphibians. So, um, and um, from Devonian period, that's where oh, we have um, the fossils from. Um, it's very hard, some of the amphibians to, um, have but uh, we have we kind of understand the connection because of all the other discoveries but they are missing some of them because they're um it's very hard for you know gelatinous um uh, like soft uh, bones or <laughs> to become fossils um, but they are big so this is um Ariops. um I love the area. <laughs> um, and uh, he, they were huge. Um, they had, they were over like probably a ton, um, very heavy, six, uh, six feet um, at least, a huge mouth. And that kind of tells you that they're very, very predatory. Um, and uh, this is a, of a fossil, the skeleton. So you can kind of tell how heavy they were actually. <laughs> Um, just looking at the bones. Um, um, uh, so um, um, this is another one, the Jiroba Krakus um, frog master, frog master, sorry, frog master. So uh, because it looks like a frog and a salamander in one. So <laughs> um, let's see, this is another one, a Colossacus. Um, so it, they didn't change their look a lot. Um, and um, it's, it's just a great adaptation it was. They just shrinked pretty much. You can see it against the human in the back. Um, it was a pretty big animal. Um, and yes, it's very possible. And we're pretty sure they ate dinosaur babies. Um, even the uh, present day amphibians, majority of them they can eat anything that fits in their mouth. So yeah, big mouth, more danger. <laughs> um, so this is, uh, we have uh, quite a diversity of amphibians on our planet. 
Uh, we have, uh, and we have three types of amphibians, the frogs and toads. Um, probably heard that toads are frogs, but frogs are not toads. Um, but they're pretty much, um, they're, as we know of, I think was 2021, we have 6,778 6, species. Um, so it's a huge diversity. <laughs> Salamanders and newts, um, they're our second type of amphibian um, and there are 713 species known to science. Again, I'm saying known because we already discovered a bunch of new ones just last year of um, frogs, probably salamanders. So we, will, we always find new ones and that's awesome. And Sicilians, uh, that's an amphibian like less known because they're not um, on this continent <laughs> and they're very secretive and um, uh, live underground mostly. They will come out just on like floods and like heavy rain, um, pretty much Africa and Asia. Um, and uh, we know by now 206 species. <laughs> um, so that's salamander, why salamander is a salamander. They have, um, they, they are tailed amphibian, uh, that's how they're different. Um, they make babies using spermatophores. Um, they can regrow last limbs and, um, and they are only vertebrae that can do so. Um, it uh, was a lot of, are a lot of uh, experiments test done on axolotls, probably a lot of you know. Um, and the last one I read off, they could regrow parts of their brain. Honestly, I, I don't want to know how and what, how it was done, but it's pretty amazing. Um, and they sequence their um, um, genome and uh, we have pretty much hopes to, um, hopefully my generation to discover the genes responsible for regeneration on limbs and uh, tissue that will be really great for anybody um, who needs it. So. Uh, when threatened, they can optimize their tail to escape. Honestly, personally, I believe a lot of amphibians. I love going out this time of year, and I encourage you to go out. This is their time. Um, I'm sure there are already egg masses um, in a lot of vernal pools. And uh, I've never seen one doing that, but they can when they try to escape predators. Like it's the same uh, process as the lizards. Uh, we have a, a life cycle of a salamander. This is just a simplistic drawing, but it kind of tells us what they go through. So, but eggs, um, uh, because of their skin being so so semi permeable, and um, uh, they're very vulnerable, of course, to environment. Everything can go through it. Um, so, uh, they and they have to be constantly moist. Um, also, their eggs have to be constantly moist and majority of them will deposit their eggs in water. Um, very rare are a few species who evolve to kind of, uh, they will skip the larval stage, but they're very rare. <laughs> and they're, it's one in a cave uh, that lives in caves. Um, um, actually, um, yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> but um, yes, so they have to be, the eggs have to be in water in order to survive and um, metamorphosize. So let's go salamander reproduction. So how I said, um, the first rain of the season, um, the, uh, when it's still sometimes snow on the ground, uh, these are tiger salamanders. Um, if, they, um, Eastern tigers, I think, yes, they, uh, they will migrate like in big groups. Um, and unfortunately, I never got out of the right nights to see it. Um, and, uh, but um, I seen while they were in the pool. So, um, so they'll migrate to their, um, Vernal pools or uh, vernal ponds. Um, this are uh, this is the one behind my um, our like in our neighborhood. Uh, and uh, honestly, it was a ditch, like a rain ditch or the water. So I look one day and I just see this like 
I was like, whoa, I found the wonderland, honestly. And I never stopped going there and trying to figure out a species and, uh, and just, if I'll never look in that, you know, brain accumulation, I, I, I would say that, so, um, but yeah, so that's where it was. Um, males will um, migrate in a congress, so they're called congress, so they're a group, supervernal pool. They're obligate species. That means they have to have that little pods, pool, puddles. Um, I'm a puddle lover because of, <laughs> I love salamanders and go and uh, meet them and figure out which ones are in the area. Um, so yes, so, uh, they, they will deposit spermatophores on the bottom of a pool. This was taken out of a um, pool just for the sake of a picture. And the females will come by and pick them up. That's pretty much um, the basics of it. So we get eggs um, and salamander eggs. Okay, oh, full screen. I'm gonna push full screen. Uh, Okay, so um, salamander eggs, let's talk about eggs. Um, these are pictures I took of different kinds of salamanders. It was a big diversity in that pool, or at least three species of salamanders that I, um, I got to watch hatch and, um, um, you know, just did that little bottle. <laughs> um, uh, the one on the left, um, it's still, there's still babies in there. They'll come out. It looks like um, it's not okay, but um, they will, they have a symbiotic relationship with algae. So what we figured it out, um, they, um, the embryos or the, the algae uh, will grow in, in the egg and it's an exchange. So they provide, um, you know, the oxygen and, you know, they consume the waste. It's, it's, it's amazing because it helps them survive better and develop faster and um, have a more successful hatch rate. Um, by the way, in this, uh, in the, oopsie, sorry. Ah, um, I'm sorry. Um, in the um, uh, one of uh, the picture of missing babies, they were, uh, they were eaten by, um, I think one of them I seen actually uh, uh, was an Eastern Newt, one of them, and uh, the other ones I saw them um, um, were predated on by um, um, dragonfly larvae. Um, so they would just suck them one at a time. And yeah, uh, this are the Jefferson, they look very, um, so it's different stages of, um, of um, eggs. It, you'll find in your little temporary um, ponds, poles, but vernal uh, hatching. And I should have a few, I have a video, um, just two minutes long, I think, of a time lapse on the hatch.
again. Yep, that's it. Um, um, I, I just thought it was fascinating that you could see the heart beating and life change. It was starting already the, um, um, the vessels and all the working in their little every gills. So about the morphosis. Um, so they will be, this is one of the um, larva uh, from the vernal pool from that I show you in my neighborhood. Um, it turned out to be a, um, a spotted, yellow spotted salamander. And okay, the, the coin is there just for size. <laughs> um, these are babies. Uh, what happened with that uh, um, rain drain draining pond that I showed you a picture of in my um, one day, a bunch of uh, people showed up and just got all the vegetation around it, absolutely everything. And it just like started drying out, like, because it didn't rain anymore. It was a dry um, season. Um, and it started drying out a lot, though. And it pretty much dried out completely. Um, that was terrifying for me. So I, I took a few... Um, I don't recommend it, but I had all the tools at home and everything I needed to help them. So I took as, uh, as many as I could of uh, uh, egg masses and they hatch. They got to be little cute salamanders. I fed them as um, babies, you know, all this life blood worms and our, and pretty much I just, uh, I just let them go. So, um, uh, tried to keep it as sterile as possible. So I don't recommend it, <laughs> but I was desperate. So once the rain starts, it accumulated water again. And um, yeah, um, I still felt really bad for all the upper that got lost. But um, now it's time under feeding. Um, and um, so our, it's another video. This is a tiger salamander. Oh, I wish a, a volume would work. Um, okay. And it's replaying. Um, okay, salamander is one of uh, their really uh, cool adaptations is they have the longest time known to science. And you can see in the video, um, and the fastest time known to science. So it's not the chameleon or the salamander. Um, so, yep, here we go. This is like slowed down. Um, and you can see how they're uh, influenced by temperature. So in upper um, right side, it says 12 uh, Celsius. And the other one is, I think, 20 something. Um, I think it's 20 Celsius. Um, so, um, yes, they, um, they're a little slower on top, so you can see it again. Um, I, um, because they are depending on their ectotherms, and we'll talk about um, a little bit um, if we have time about the, how that. Um, why, why that it's an advantage <laughs> and um, how help us survive. And this is the last one about feeding because I think it's really cool. This is a bullet palm salamander um, and you can see why the crickets just disappear. <laughs> um, and I love this picture because it's like almost like they're sharing. They're not going for the same cricket. I thought that was, that was pretty cool. It's a, re it's a reason why this um, amazing creatures are still around. So um, we're going to um, types of salamander, but before we get to that, and uh, I wanted to um, um, actually literally go on the Virginia Herpetological Society uh, webpage and just like um, help you get familiar with it and um, uh, 
Um, so, uh, sorry, <laughs> but um, so I need to talk about why we need the amphibians and why they're important. Um, so we do have totally, you know, 8,320 8, uh, species of amphibians on our planet, but we are 43%. So it's an absolutely a mass extinction. Like it's almost, it goes in its simultaneous loss uh, so we have lost 3,500 species from all global ecosystems. So it goes in the same time. So that's very catastrophic. Um, and um, it needs attention. Um, um, uh, so why they disappear so fast? Is there habitat alteration? Of course, it's, uh, they get harvest. Um, unfortunately, it's for in... Easter medicine or just to use as bait. Um, I guess there's a bunch of them are eaten. Um, uh, they exotic species, so they're collected, they get collected and get the pet trade. Um, acidification of uh, environment, um, contaminants, how we, we um, so they call it um, the, their, you know, a death, we have an extinction death. Um, outdoor pets and feral cats. I have cats, I love cats. Um, and it's very hard to talk about this subject. Um, they're not allowed outside. Um, I have a Bengal cat that he is desperate because he was adopted and he was wild for a year in California. So, um, and we got him and he always tries to escape. Um, but it's hard, it's very hard. But they kill hundreds of millions of amphibians a year, one cat. So it's just, it's an incredible numbers. Um, and um, yeah, they're, especially feral cats, more than, you know, domesticated. Uh, but, um, but emergency, uh, emergency infection diseases. So it's a new um, fungus disease that affects amphibians all over the globe, and we try to prevent it to get it here in North America. Um, it's another scary thing, and um, climate-related impacts. So we kind of see that a lot. <laughs> um, okay, let's do the. So I'm gonna stop for a little bit to see if we have any questions, and I'll go to. Um, um, we'll go and talk about types of salamanders in, okay, sorry, come on, okay, stop. Okay. Oh, well, um, uh, so if you have any questions, again, I'm very sorry for my um, primitive <laughs> relationship with my, uh, with uh, this program, so. Um, no, no, you're okay. It was great. Um, there are lots of questions in the chat for you. So do, would you like me to just read them and you can talk yes, about them? Yes, please. And I will grab at least somebody <laughs> to show. Um, and uh, yes, please. And um, um, and I, I forgot, uh, now if we have like a, a lot of, uh, uh, majority of the species in the world are in North America. So we are pretty lucky. We have uh, quite a, heritage <laughs> um and uh, so over 150 species and the total is over 400 in the world so yeah go ahead you have so many facts it's wonderful um well these questions are asking random facts so you may or might not know the answer but i bet you will so the first one um from an eight-year-old is excited and she's wondering if they if salamanders have eyelids and therefore do they need to blink or not if they don't have eyelids that's a good one let's see a salamander <laughs> and uh, we'll, see, we'll see if we can tell <laughs> um but uh, um that's a very good one i love it okay come here you uh, so this will be a um, yellow spotted. I'm trying to get out of it. Um, think. Uh, you're all dirty. <laughs> okay, you need other 
I'm just put him in the water. Okay, so this is a yellow spotted salamander. And I see if we can. So they do have eyelids. Um, um, I don't know if I can make him blink. <laughs> um, he's a little chubby. <laughs> um, he loves his crickets. Um, another interesting. Uh, but an uh, interesting fact about, so I'm using the gloves because I, you know, it helps them stay moist. Um, they're more comfortable um, in this way. Hi, buddy. And uh, also, uh, you know, again, I don't want to, um, I have lotion. It's dry still around uh, this season, so we don't want to, I don't want to hurt them in any way because it, I love them to death. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Any um, any other questions? We have three I love. Okay. Yeah, there's other I'll questions. I'll let you read it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so another one is asking, how did amphibians and salamanders survive when the dinosaurs did not survive the great extinction? Because of their adaptations. That's again, super cool question. Um, so they they they're so well adapted and um, that uh, they survived. They are more crepuscular, fossorial. That means like you know like fossil means they're like hiding. They stay. Uh, they come out at night. Uh, they're great carnivores, <laughs> and there are a lot of insects around. And it's really nice to have them around the house. Um, because uh, you not have like, uh, we're around their neighborhood, so many problems with, with mosquitoes. They love mosquito larvas, larvas of uh, babies, of uh, uh, their, especially their babies. Uh, um, so yes, um, their ectoterms, I said, we'll talk about it, what's the advantage of being cold blooded, <laughs> pretty much that's what it means. Um, they don't need so much energy, first of all, and all the energy they're consuming goes in like, in their body to reproduce, to heal. Um, and uh, um, they don't use it for like us. We use our majority of our energy to stay warm. Our body is like a factory, it has to warm up constantly, constantly. Um, theirs, it's not, they're just dependent on the environment. So pretty much like, you know, very <laughs> friends, he just I had like a little jump, was kind of cute. So they're friends of, uh, you know, they're uh, reptiles and they're connected, <laughs> they're relatives. <laughs> so, uh, yes, um, so one, um, they just all their adaptation together help them survive. Um, it's a proof that highly they change their shape too, um, the size matter. <laughs> they, 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 a lot of them. So, yeah, go ahead. That's amazing, thank you. Uh, okay. There's some good ones too. Is there an easy way to tell between frog eggs and salamander eggs in the vernal, vernal pools? It is, and actually thank you for all this question. It's very hard to decide because um, it's so much good information and so much to cover the entire classes. Um, you know, and uh, like it's during like weeks and and, and I will I will recommend it to you guys, but um, but yes, um, um, frog eggs they will usually when you try to lift them up, just try not to you know on top of the water try so um, they will kind of go through your they're more gooey and they will go through your fingers kind of like it feels like they will just go like you cannot hold them <laughs> together. Salamander eggs, uh, like this, the ones we have, um, you know, in here in Virginia, well, they have uh, the uh, majority of them are pretty much all of them. They're like together, like they're they have this enca they're encapsulated in in so they're more like a you know that stress balls that people play with, like they're very soft, but, they, um, but they're still like kind of they hold their shape. That's how salamander eggs is. So when you lift it up, you don't feel like, oh my, you know, it's not the same. Uh, you can just tell. You, uh, I'll put this guy back because he's, <laughs> um, he's um, restless. 
he does need exercise. <laughs> but that's that's <laughs> so yes. Um okay, I should I will find the pictures for uh, uh so you can see the difference. It's just you'll be able to tell if you see the ball together of the eggs, that's salamanders. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll get somebody else what? while I'm listening. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> well, there's a lot more questions. Maybe we can take one for now and then we can look at your Virginia okay. salamander section yes. just because we only have about 15 minutes left in, in the yes. hour. Um, yes. But people are asking, when do vernal pools dry out? Um, and are many of the larvae lost to the lack of that water? Well, it was in, so um, they need the vernal pool to dry up. Um, a lot of uh, species of obligated species to um, like it's a fairy shrimp and they have to. So majority of them will dry out. They have the rule, I think is four months a year have water in them. So they learn to grow and grow fast, these babies. And they love uh, this kind of, pools um in um they love them because they're no fish that's the idea of it like so um they they every year they'll go to the same place where they're born not after when they after they mature so some of them take them a few good years <laughs> three four five sometimes depends on the species so they'll go to the same place where they're born. And unfortunately, when people build houses on, or like they get dried out, they will still go there and it's not there. So that's quite sad. Um, um, their, their migration are very early spring. Um, so uh, they, they became salamanders um, by the time they went through, um, the vernal pool is supposed to dry out. What happened with that, the, a rain ditch uh, like what I was telling you about is um, they cut the vegetation so like suddenly all this water is exposed to hot sun um, so they speed up a process and you know habitat habitat alteration so that messed it up really bad because um, they didn't like the bushes some you know uh, I like the <laughs> but it it's just some people just need to know um, that wait a little bit, wait for fall or wait uh, to do that and give them a chance. That's all they need. This is a newt. Um, this is a marble newt. It's European. Um, um, and <laughs> he has a completely different behavior. He's just him, Mr. Uh, Mr. Marble, I call him. Um, and Mr. Ma, oh, I, I'm sure we have our our own uh, marble salamander in Virginia that's super cool looking. But what I want to say, I was telling you about, can you see all the dots on his skin? That's the biggest, like how you can tell usually a newt from a salamander. So his skin looks very dry and all the dots are actually full of poison. <laughs> so kids never put one in your mouth <laughs> because um, so that can make you sick or um, so majority of amphibians are poisonous or just disgusting <laughs> but um, um, so he looks dry so newts are adapted to live a little farther from land um, their skin will be bumpy and dry beside that they will look like uh, they're all salamander and he has a passive tail the holes on me, um, yeah, it's, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we'll go to the website and we'll, uh, um, and after we'll see um, the axolotl, the neoteni, where they stay children forever. <laughs> um, and uh, we have, um, um, so it's, um, I, I know it's not, it's not native, but, um, you know, it's like a big larva, so we can see the details much better. And um, like, uh, and uh, uh, I have a sudden newt and aft. Um, it actually it goes through the transition to water. <laughs> but okay, let's uh, do this. Um, mm, actually, pretty much I'll just oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, I would just pretty much just go on the website and go through it because 
Um, it's, it's worth it. Okay, here we go. Um, so Regina Herpetological Society. Let's do this. Um, okay, so I'm talking about California. I was talk probably by you know, Michigan, and maybe I'll mention New Jersey, and I'll mention um, North Carolina. It's just because we're military families, so we got moved around a lot by Marine Corps from east to west coast, pretty much. This is the only time they kept us on this coast. Um, and of course, I'm, I'm mentioning this because I, I looked at a lot of, once I became very interested and obsessed <laughs> with um, herpetology and, um, and behavior of reptiles, especially, I, uh, I, I looked in a lot of societies and I, I can, I promise you, this is the best research and the best um, website and I, I met. I'm not saying they're not good ones out there, but the ones I, I got you, um, you know, so it's pretty good. It's awesome. Um, and uh, here we go. Um, so we have 59. Uh, Jefferson Salamander is obligated, by the way, to vernal pools too, and they will meet with a yellow spotted pretty much it's almost like the same time migration um now will you share um, your screen with us oh i didn't share my screen with me sorry i'm just talking and i'm looking at them thing sorry <laughs> i thought it's sharing thanks for letting me know mm, start broadcast two one zero here we go <laughs> Can you see it? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Oh, welcome. So I decided to do it like this because um, there are 59 species and I felt obligated to mention as many of them as we can. Um, I, I know we don't have a lot of time, but so um, and thinking about it, I realized that I better let you know about the website and how cool it is and easy to go and find out facts about, uh, and maybe find out your neighbors, <laughs> your salamander and youth neighbors, um, um, by identifying them with help. Um, so the maybe salamander um, and a lot, they're spotted. I guess uh, mine is, looks pretty okay. <laughs> So they have a variant in color, in the background color of a spot, yellow spotted. And in, um, you know, like some of them would be more hypo, like more light colored. So, and interesting fact, I heard uh, one of the studies I read in the last few years was that females don't like the male, they don't prefer the males. So to pick up a spermatophores from the males, we've equally like really, um, uh, dots. So the dots cannot be symmetrical. <laughs> Less symmetrical they are, more successful they are in um, having females picking up their um, spermatophores. I thought that I would think it would be the other way around, but yeah. Um, marble uh, salamander. Um, marble salamander, a cool adaptation they have, they will actually deposit their eggs in full, like full. And they're, lar they're uh, close to this pool, the uh, vernal uh, pools. And, and they, um, as soon as the rains come and the, the pool it fills up with water, uh, they, uh, in spring, uh, they will hatch uh, right away. So they kind of, um, uh, so they're bigger. They already hatch. They don't have to go through like, you know, the egg stage and they're bigger, they're hungry. And they have a lot to eat on all the other salamanders. Um, so, so they um, they give a big advantage to their babies um, to um, survive. Um, the mole salamander, um, um, yes, they're all in the same family as the ambistomas. Um, um, this is our eastern tiger salamander, and it's state endangered. Um, so that said, I haven't, I, I turn a lot of logs in our county parks and I, I turn in everywhere. And I, I, I had the opportunity to 
uh, see a bunch of different species, but never this one, unfortunately. Not yet. I hope that will. Um, this is uh, amphiumas. The amphiumas have, they're pretty much aquatic, so they'll stay in water all their life. And they have this little, you know, um, but two toes. They actually has two toes on the front legs. It's kind of cute. Um, the green salamander looks a lot like the marble, New European marble, um, green marble um, newt. Um, so, so it, it's. Um, I'm looking at the time. Eastern hellbender. Um, by the way, um, I fell in love with uh, hellbenders. Again, I'm, I'm most. I was, and I'm still oriented towards snakes and behavior research in snakes. But um, I still visit Hester Hairbender in uh, in the zoo. A lot of zoos have them. Um, in uh, was in uh, Pennsylvania. We went through it. Um, uh, Pittsburgh Zoo. I, and anyway, what I wanted to say is like it was looking like it's playing with the air bubbles. They had like air bubble pump over the side and uh, would just like swim through it really fast when it would get closer and go back. And honestly, um, I will use the word play. It was looked like it played with <laughs> And it was so cool to see this. Um, how you can see they have, uh, um, they're, they're pretty, um, they're not doing very good because um, but their name doesn't make them very popular, first of all. Um, uh, they have a bad name because they will fight. They will fight for their lives when they're picked up. And honestly, I will if they try to use me for bait. Um, um, and uh, they need very clean, very uh, in cold water, like mountain water. Um, how you can see on our, on the Virginia map, um, that's where they're found in cold, clean st streams. Um, they have parental care. A lot of uh, uh, um, salamanders uh, like uh, will stay with their ex, some of them, um, and to protect them from predators and help them their fathers, I guess. Um, they will, um, 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 you know, we found in the virginity of, uh, of uh, eggs that uh, the females deposit and they um, they got to their dad <laughs> and they will protect their uh, newborn. So I thought that was pretty cool considering that it's a lot of cannibalism going <laughs> between, um, you know, uh, salamanders. Um, Nordaski salamander, shovel nose, uh, this is a different family already, so um, this Gonatus. <laughs> um, seal salamanders, so a lot of them are obligated, like they will be found just in like small areas, some of them a little larger areas, but we have quite a diversity. Mountain dusk, um, dusky salamander. So I will go <laughs> and uh, you get to see the colors and um, you know, um, hear the names and uh, the common names. And, um, you know, I encourage you to open the additional information pages and um, just read about them. Um, Northern pygmy salamander, so it's really little. <laughs> and it's uh, how you can see on the map, it's not found, it, there's a very limited area for the species. And a smaller area, so that means more danger, um, of course. So um, it's sad. Um, I would love to go there and, and see one with my own eyes. So, two inches, uh, smaller than some of the uh, micro geckos. Um, a flat headed, um, flat head means digging. They like pushing things <laughs> in reptiles, in salamanders, um, shovel head. Um, and that's why they have a lot of shovel head, flat head names. So they'll tell you they're really crepuscular living in um, under in um, you know logs and rocks and and, and they prefer humid of course. Um, like mountain salamander, <laughs> um, northern two lined. This is actually I've seen them in uh, Stafford County and Prince William County. So um, maybe I should. <laughs> so yeah, there's. That's where they are. Um, southern two-line salamander. Um, 
these are not very big um, creatures, especially, but to line, they almost look like babies. They just, um, but um, yeah, um, three lines. So a lot of diversity. Um, you stand along, and not all states have that, and all countries have that. Uh, cave salamander tells you I prefer caves. Um, so yeah, I will just try to finish this with, uh, with uh, yeah. Even like this, I, uh, I, so Kentucky spring salamander, northern spring salamander, um, Porto salamander, um, his photos, common mud poppy, they're beautiful <laughs> and they're pretty much aquatic. Um, the dwarf water dog, um, it's, got, it's cute because, um, of course, all they are cute for me. <laughs> uh, they have a poppy faces, I think a lot of them. But um, um, if you ever see, um, you know, mud poppy, their um, the gills will be much large, uh, like feathery, and because they live in more muddy water. These guys, the, door, the water dogs, um, their gills are smaller because they prefer um, cleaner water. <laughs> So they don't need so much surface to exchange oxygen. Um, red spotting newt, and this is a little, he's so tiny too. <laughs> the one I have, you'll see, but um, they have a, a, so they will be the aft. And when I was younger, I thought it's elf. And honestly, I was very disappointed when I found out that I was pronouncing it completely wrong. <laughs> Because I thought Elf would be a super cool name for such an amazing creature. But Elf is a very interesting name, too. So um, they are uh, they're very daring. This of a very stage when they're in the F stage, they'll more, be more diurnal. So you can get the chance to see them um, and, um, and during the day. Um, and, and they're more daring because they'll be more. You know, not a lot of things will eat them or mess up with them because it's not just their newts, uh, but the red color definitely tells danger, danger, nature, you know. Um, so, uh, one more minute. <laughs> so, I should stop, Courtney. Thanks. Now, maybe we can, I can just say some few last things. And if you want to stay and show some more salamanders, anybody who's welcome or who wants to stay can, can see them. But, um, to wrap up, I will just end right now um, and just say, if you're not a member of Wild Virginia, please consider becoming one. Please join us for any of our future webinars, our book club next Monday. Um, you can find all of that stuff in our Eventbrite. But uh, those are our, thank you everybody for joining us. That was all of our announcements. I wanted to make sure everybody heard if you had to hop off. But if you want to stay, Anna, we are, I'm sure people yeah, can course. hop off. Me too. <laughs> yeah, thank you so to, much for your patience and um, um, everybody. Um, just uh, I'm going back to yeah, that was very embarrassing <laughs> for oh. me. But I hope um, I hope we'll, it'll, it'll get you interested in in uh, salamanders. Uh, more and um you know and you're welcome i'm glad let me let me grab my the elf after he's actually a mute by now he refuses to get in water too like i have like half water half land so i i i don't know how um but i give him that opportunity you can see what color he takes um he was a rescue some kids i they were playing with it and he didn't know where we're from <laughs> in a school. So he ends up um, being an educational animal. He was very rad when I, um, and he's, he's tiny. They're not, as an adult, they, he'll probably double up. But it takes me a few, it takes him a good few years. Um, sometimes up, I think it's three, some, it can be five, depends on the food availability and temperature outside. Uh, where they live um, before they become adults and they go back in water as adults. Um, yeah. So, Mr. Carrot, because he looked like a carrot. <laughs> Miss. So, yeah. Just um, one of the cool adaptations that helped them survive with dinosaurs. Um, um, also, it's um, 
the, the, they don't depend on lungs. They breathe through the skin, and you'll have a, you'll hear like lungless salamander, you know, because literally they depend just on exchange of air through their skin. Um, so, but it's an advantage because um, it's easier to just go <laughs> between water and land. And so you see how dry he is. Oh, he just fell on the on the on the table. I'm sorry. It's not very far, I promise. <laughs> Mr. Garrett. Okay. Go in water, Mr. Garrett. Um, okay, so I think I'll let the axolato. So axolotos, they are I put him his his tank is too big and um on the other side of the house. Let me see if I can make him get closer. Come on, Mr. Ax. He's He's a wild type, Mr. Three Fingers, because, let me see if I can change the lamp thingy, uh, because he's born with three fingers in front. So one of his legs, it's hard to see like this, only if I, you know, um, has three fingers <laughs> um, in the front part. And um, so he cannot regenerate because he never lost it. Genetically, he has just three. So it's Mr. Three Fingers um, X. X Mr. Three Fingers. It's on his left, I think. But yeah. They there, and you can see the they're pretty much a maximized, a very big larva, salamander larva, because they don't change. It's near tiny. They just get their shape for all of their life. Um, they can induce change, they can induce to metamorphosize in an adult, like a but they look very different than uh, you'll think it's a mutant salamander. It's very interesting um, with hormones. They can do better with hormones and stuff. Um, yeah. I guess, I guess salamanders. Earlier. Go, go ahead. Yeah. There was a great question where somebody asked how long salamanders live. Um, is it oh, dependent on what species or? No, I think I think they can. I heard 30 years. Um, honestly, I have to look out to see what's the oldest one. In, in um, medium, they say like 10, 15. Um, I'm, it's very hard to, in the wild, plus you have the, all this environmental and predators and uh, diseases that affect their lifespan. Um, but genetically, they can live pretty long time. Um, yeah, <laughs> X. Uh, he loves earthworms. Um, so I can get the um, but yellow spotted again, so it's more easy to see now the difference uh, between their skin. And yeah, if you have any questions, please go ahead. Maybe you should let them like just you know audio on. So. Um, if anybody has a question they'd like to ask, please feel free. He's pretty symmetrical, I think, not perfect. So <laughs> you'll have some success if a ladies, I think. <laughs> but I tell the difference. I cannot, can you read it for me, please, Courtney? Oh, I have spring vernal. Yeah, it's asking the difference between frog and salamander eggs. Um, but you already kind of talked about that a little bit. And we can send a link that talks about that, about the difference between the two and how it feels when you hold them and how they look. Um, another yeah. person is asking how many salamanders you have at home. Uh, I like to cut little prints in this, like numbers. Numbers are for adults. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, I have. But he has a friend, and um, and uh, so two. See, I have numbers are for adults. <laughs> uh, two, three, four. There's just four, and uh, five with an um, axolotl. Um, it's not okay to take them from a while, as I said. Uh, they look easy. They're not very easy. Um, you don't want your cat or dog or um, get onto them and lick them and um, because it will not be good. 
Um, so yeah. Um, um, they people, live a very I've long time. So it's a, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. They live a very long time. So you have a pet for a while, like almost like a turtle. <laughs> so yeah. Um, a couple day. people are asking for tips on where to find them and also how to safely handle them. Um, if you don't have like disposable gloves, uh, just take, um, um, you know, and change the gloves between the pools at least because of a contamination problems. Um, but if you cannot, if you, you know, change between like animals, but um, Oh, uh, okay. So yes, go outside. I should have answered. I cannot wait. I'm right now actually in Michigan because we had a year here um, and it still snows. <laughs> and maybe I'll get to see a migration, <laughs> but uh, uh, go outside. Um, well, the accumulation of water, just look. Um, it, it, no fish. It can be even on a lawn sometimes. It's like accumulate water there for a few months of a year. It, possible is a, a, a burn a pool will be um and it's not, not just salamanders it'll be like wood frogs and you know and you know kind of uh cool frogs too and follow the call of the frogs <laughs> in spring they will tell you where it is too because a lot of them prefer this pools because less predators um salamanders are predators but it's not as bad as having fish um what else it's very much would be like wood places where um, they just been there for a while. They were water. Just go look look in them. You should you should have we should have in Virginia already egg masses, and you'll see the gelatinous things, and um, and you'll try. It's 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 pretty cool. Um, and it's cool to go back if you can and just see uh, you know about babies and how it goes. Uh, if you have a net, make sure it's clean, of course, and uh, keep them on top of the water. Uh, just try to let them go. They're very fragile. Um, yeah. Um, as tough as they are, that's how fragile they are. <laughs> In the same time, it's, uh, it's um, yeah. So I don't know if I answer the question. Um, I think those are helpful tips. Uh, I think the fragile part is the most important. Just they breathe through their skin, so don't. They need to stay some kind of moist and just be careful with them. So, yeah, and keep the water, keep your uh, your hands uh, moist. Like, try to like put it in water if you lift up a frog or something. Don't squeeze, and probably you'll not get to see adults only if it's starter newts. They will be in the water uh, because they come, they congregate, uh, they you know um, deposit spirit or pick it up, deposit eggs, and they go and they hide. <laughs> and some of them can be like. 500 meters, it, it, it's very hard to find adults, honestly. Um, it depends on, so in the pools, well, if you don't catch the migration, but you get to see the babies. <laughs> so, and follow the calls, that's what it is. That's how I, I, I start finding a lot of the calls of the frogs, the chorus of a cricket. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, one that's earliest, my brain. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is related to, I think this will be the last question and we'll wrap, we'll wrap up. But um, if several species of salamanders are in the same pool and the males deposit their spermatophores randomly, how do the females know which ones to pick up? That's a very good question. Of course, the chemical clues, actually, uh, our bunch of salamanders, they have dances. That's what they call it, like, they, 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 and it's a. Uh, I have to send you the book, uh, Phoebians, where they literally they have schematics of like how they will move in a certain way to impress a girl. Um, so it's chemical, a lot of chemical. Um, the Eastern, uh, if you search Eastern Newt, um, they will hold on the female until she goes to the rice from March of and they're, you know, mating uh, a little dance, they'll hold on her neck. It almost looks like they want to be you know like i don't know like it's, it's just interesting but they don't hurt it it looks like it's almost like hurting the way they hold it on um, with the back legs on the neck but it's just part of their uh, ritual <laughs> mating um they do have hybrids it's that's another um the blue spotted and the jefferson it's uh should it escape the name for me they're all females 
um, and they are called sperm uh, um, uh, sperm parasites <laughs> because they will uh, this hybrids. Um, um, and they're very hard to distinguish. I have a picture actually that I don't think we have time. I, I can look it up and of course that uh, like the difference between the blue spotted Jefferson and the hybrids. Um, they're all females. A majority of them, they will not survive to adulthood. They'll, depart, they will steal sperm from other species. So it's actually, they will, it's like, that's why they call it like sperm parasite <laughs> because they will go uh, in this pool and just steal the spermatophores. And um, they produce, I think it's just 20% of viable and there'll be also females and, you know, um, and um, they, you know, they continue the tradition. <laughs> um, yeah, I will, I will look it up really fast. Um, I think, I, let me see. Also, I can send that out so that the group, I can send out a follow out email and I can put that link in there, but. Um, yeah, like the parallel. Oh, here it is. Let me see if I can. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, but go ahead. I, I, yeah, we, I'll try to um, air. Um, I had to turn my um, to air. Um, send it to my iPad like I showed. Uh, come on, it's waiting. Any more questions? <laughs> here it is. Can you see it? No. Okay. Sorry, I have to share. <laughs> Uh, come on. Okay, I'm sorry. And we'll do it again. Let's see. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Uh, so, so they're called polyploidal. <laughs> Um, and you see the Jefferson on the left and the, um, you know, um, pretty much the complex uh, hybrid on the right. Uh, I think that's one of them. Let me see, we have a picture. Um, amphibian foundation is great for, um, I don't know, for classes and like just, I think they have a great uh, website too. Um, I will definitely check it out. That's how, I took a course they teach online. It's anatomy of uh, of uh, amphibians, um, and I that's uh, I learned from about it, and I thought it was very very impressive. So I think it's the same picture actually, but yes, they look very similar. They're very hard to distinguish in between. It's almost they can look like a Jefferson salamander, or it can look like a blue spot. It depends how you look at it. So, but yeah. Yes, any more? Um, like, I hope you answered. Um, I think that's about yeah. it tonight. I think we'll wrap it up and I'll stop recording. And thank you so much for oh, joining fine. us. This is fantastic.